Yo, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to this course. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to use React Query to cache API data in Electron and display it within our app. Now, this is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be pulling the data using React Query, and the next part is going to be styling the actual data that we get. So this is going to be meat and potatoes of the actual two-part series right here. Uh, basically, by the end of it, what's going to happen is that we will be pulling some data from the Jacanmo API to display a couple of anime right here. And very simply, what's going to be happening is that it's going to be caching the data so we don't overuse the API. And it's also a good practice to make sure that um, you're not doing anything like that. Uh, so this is pretty simple. All it's doing is pulling the anime data. And then it's going to create these cards here that if I were to change the resolution of the screen, it ends up being responsive properly so right here you can see that it goes from three cards to two cards and then one card and remember that we did set a minimum width so it never goes smaller than this and it still looks pretty good so without further ado let's go ahead and get started all right so last time we left off our app looked something like this right here it was a simple app it's a basic nav bar that we can navigate back and forth between two components and that's it so to fetch data from the API, the Jacanmo API, the first thing we need to do is we need to first install two dependencies. So I'm going to do npm install, and I'm going to install Axios, and I'm also going to install something called at tanstack slash react dash query. All right, cool, so that concludes all the dependencies we need for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and run the app again, and I'll minimize my terminal just a little bit. So while the app is getting up and running, the first thing that we need to do now is we need to create a new folder that's going to be responsible for all of our queries. And for our queries, what I'm going to be doing is within my source folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it, oops, create another folder, call it queries. And inside of queries, I'm going to create a new file and I'll call it anime queries.ts and this is where we are going to be querying the Jacanmo API to get some anime data. Alright, so I've opened up the documentation for the Jacanmo API and I'm going to quickly just talk about what it's going to be doing. Uh, when we request data from this API, we're going to get a whole bunch of metadata regarding an anime, the title, the string, the images, uh, the trailer, when it aired, the synopsis of the anime, the ranking of the anime. Um, and that's what we're going to be using to actually create our application. Now, however, um, we are going to be just querying this little first part right here. We don't need this entire thing. We just need to be able to query this first part to see the first couple of animes that, uh, that this API can give us. And we are going to be caching those results so that we can um, not overload their gracious API that they made for free. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up React Query um, and initialize it with our app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my app.tsx file and inside of here I am going to create a variable right above my function app right here and I'll do const, call it const query client is equal to new query client and I'm going to import it from at tanstack slash react dash query and then I'm going to encapsulate my entire app right here including the router inside of a thing called query client provider from Tanstack. And I'm going to give this a parameter of client, and this is going to be equal to our query client variable that we created right here. So now we've set up, let me just move this up above right here. There we go. So now we've set up React Query. Now let's go ahead and actually make a query and query the API. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to import the dependencies that we just installed. So I'm going to do import and it's going to be called use query from at tanstack slash direct dash query. And I'm going to import Axios from Axios. There we go. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a simple Axios call to the Jacanmo API. So what I'll do is I'll call a variable called all anime URL is equal to and it's going to be that URL that I was talking about earlier 
So it's going to be HTTPS double slash API dot Jacan Mo slash V4 slash anime. And this is going to be actually very similar to this is going to be exactly how uh, we did it for a react native app that we built in the last course. So then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do const get all anime is equal to async function call and I'll give it const response is equal to await axios.get all anime URL and finally we're just going to return response dot data there we go so now we've created our API call now we need to create a use query that is going to cache the data that we pull from the API so we're not recalling it over and over and over again Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do export const use get all oops the use should be a capital U get all anime is equal to function call like so and I'll do const is loading and data is equal to use query and I'll explain to you what this means in a bit call all anime get all anime return data and is loading all right so this is very simple we are creating a variable called is loading and data this is coming straight out of react query so these are two variables that basically the first one is loading checks if the data that we're receiving has it completely loaded yet and it gives us a back a uh, boolean true or false and if it is done loading or if there's an error or whatever, then we get our data within this variable. So this is also coming from React Query. And right here we have the use query hook and we have a unique identifier to tell our app that this is gonna represent our logic for our get all anime function right here that we made. So our API call that we made right here. And then finally after that, we're just returning it. Uh, we're just returning the data and is loading so we can receive it in our front end and then we can check if the data is done loading and we can display the data. Cool. So now let's go ahead and actually receive the data. So I'm going to open up my animated list TSX file and instead of here, I'm going to import a couple of things. The first thing is I want to import is data and is loading. And remember where we created it is it's going to be equal to use get all anime. And then after that, what I'm going to do oops, is check if it is loading, then we are just going to return a div that says loading dot dot dot. Very simple. Oops, let me add a return. There we go. And so now if I go into my anime list, we can see that it's loading and then we see this right here. So now we have the data and um, I can show you because if we were to type data, we are going to see absolutely nothing. Because I just typed data, I should be console.log data. Whoops, there we go. And we should see, if we go back into there, that we have pagination and an array of 25 items, which is our anime data right here. So now it's actually cached and everything. And after that, we are going to go ahead and render it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an h1 tag right here and I'll call it anime list page. And well, I already created it earlier. Whoops, forgot about that. Um, then after that, I'm going to create a div and inside of the div is where our data is going to be displaying. So what I'll do is I'll do data question mark dot data question mark dot map anime and then we're going to do a return like so and inside of here is where we can create our um, cards that we saw in the beginning of the video so just so we can see some basic stuff what I'll do is I'm going to create a div tag inside of here with a closing div tag like so and I will create an image tag and for this image tag, what I'll do is I'm going to give it a source, which is going to be equal to, oops, 
source, which is going to be equal to anime dot images dot jpeg dot image underscore URL. And the way I know that is because if I go into one of these objects and I were to find images wherever they are, right here, images, you have two separate items. You have WebP and JPEG. So I'm selecting JPEG and I'm selecting the image URL right here. And then after that, what I'll do is I will just do um, an H1 tag that is going to display anime.title, which is going to be here somewhere, right here, title. And just so we have um, a little bit of content, we'll just pick, we'll just uh, add the synopsis as well, which is just a description. Synopsis. And so now if I save it, we can see that we have the data. It's not scrolling. Um, let's make it scrollable actually. So what I'll do is right here, I'll give it a um, basic style tag and I will give this a height of 100, oops, 100 VH. So now we can actually scroll up and down or not. Let's give this a overflow of, I think, auto. And now we can scroll, there we go. So now we have 25 items with their images their description and their title. And we actually cached all this data too. So that means that now we aren't really talking to the database. We're actually just looking through a cache. And if there's nothing available in the cache, then we toggle the actual API. So we have our data showing and it's a lot faster than just straight up pulling the data and then rendering it from there. Alrighty, so that concludes this tutorial. We learned how to work with React Query at a very basic level and set it up in our Electron app. In the next video, we're actually going to be customizing this uh, this whole all of this amount of information to have that dynamic gallery that we saw in the beginning of the video. So stay tuned for that. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.